Welcome to the world of art. In fifth grade, we are going to learn about a very famous artist who lived not so very long ago. Her name is Georgia O'Keeffe, and she is one of the most fascinating people of the past 100 years. One of the reasons O'Keeffe became so famous is that she was a very good noticer. Nothing escaped her attention. Just like the Bible says God knows when a sparrow falls or can count the number of hairs on our heads, Georgia O'Keeffe noticed everything. But she did more than just notice. She also helped share through her art so we could all notice too. Georgia O'Keeffe loved to do close-up paintings of small things like flowers, making them huge on her canvas so we could see the details she thought were important. Because of her unique, often dreamlike perspective, O'Keeffe is known as a surrealist. In art, the word surreal means crossing the boundary between dreams and reality. Lots of artists played with their dreams, converting them into funny, dark, or graceful images for all to consider. Georgia O'Keeffe's surrealism was very dreamlike and beautiful. She loved to capture a tiny fragment of nature and make it so big it felt like you were falling into it. She once said that she magnified her flowers because Nobody sees a flower, really. It's too small. We haven't time. By getting very, very, very close up, O'Keefe was able to play with colors and textures and subjects that other people didn't think about. When people saw what she had done, they were amazed and they wanted more. But wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's learn more about who Georgia O'Keeffe was. Georgia O'Keeffe was born in 1887 in Wisconsin. She had six brothers and sisters and grew up on a farm where she helped her family by cooking, sewing, and growing vegetables. When she was five, O'Keeffe went to school in a one-room schoolhouse. She didn't like school, but she did enjoy the private art lessons she took afterward. She knew she wanted to be an artist. Soon, O'Keeffe's family moved to Virginia, where O'Keeffe was able to start high school. Everyone at her high school loved her drawings. After high school, O'Keeffe went to study at the Art Institute of Chicago. She enjoyed it there, but she got very sick after only one year and had to stop going. But she didn't forget what she'd learned. One of her teachers and mentors was an artist named William Merritt Chase. He taught her to paint in a very traditional style, since nobody had really heard of or even invented surrealism yet. O'Keeffe was so good that she even won a national award for one of her more traditional works. Dead Rabbit with a Copper Pot was the name of it. Not a nice subject for those of us who like our bunnies. When she finally felt better, over a year later, O'Keeffe decided to continue her studies. In 1912, she began taking drawing classes at the University of Virginia. She learned to paint in many different styles before she developed one of her own. Now we're going to take a very short quiz to see how well you're picking up on this material. We're going to start with a very easy one. What is the name of our featured artist in fifth grade? Is it George Kiefer, Georgia O'Keeffe, Bugs Bunny, or Georgina O'Kennedy? That's right, it's Georgia O'Keeffe. I sure hope you all got that one. To which school or type of art did our artist belong? St. Gerard, Impressionist, Surrealist, 
or cartoonist? That's right, it's surrealist. This is a term you're going to want to remember. What is surrealism about? Photograph like paintings of real things, southern foods and objects, flowers, or the line between dreams and reality. Well, if nothing else, hopefully Mustache Man has helped us know that surrealism is about the line between dreams and reality. The direction of O'Keeffe's artistic practice shifted dramatically in 1912 when she studied the revolutionary ideas of Arthur Wesley Dow. Dow encouraged O'Keeffe to begin to paint differently, to think about the process she used, and to really explore what she wanted to say with her art. His emphasis on composition and design offered O'Keeffe an alternative to realism, and it was an alternative she liked. She experimented with the new style for two years while she taught art in South Carolina and West Texas. O'Keeffe began a series of abstract charcoal drawings in 1915 that represented a radical break with tradition and made O'Keeffe one of the very first American artists to practice pure abstraction. So what is abstraction? Let's look at an example. Here we see a photograph of an apple. It's very clear. There's no question about what this object is. Now you can see an abstract painting of an apple. It's kind of like an apple if you know what you're looking at, but it could be other things too, like the top of an alien's helmet or a dart hitting a pillow. The point is not so much to show the apple itself, but to convey how the apple makes you feel or to give a sense of its intrinsic nature. Intrinsic means something that's totally unique to the object. The thing about abstract art is that it's not even trying to be real. It's supposed to convey an impression, not the real thing. It's designed to make you think. I know, right? So let's go back and look at two early pieces of art composed by O'Keeffe. You can see the rabbit image here is very realistic. The bunny is the right color, the copper pot looks as it should, and it appears very much as you would see it in real life. The image on the right, however, is not as easy to discern. Is it a row of peas in a pod? A line of people walking on a bridge or through a tunnel? The magnified end of a matchbook? Does it matter if you know the name of that drawing is number 13 special? Yeah, me neither. But anyway, O'Keeffe mailed some of these highly abstract sketches to a friend in New York City. The friend showed them to a famous photographer named Alfred Stiglitz. An art dealer and internationally known photographer, Stiglitz was the first to exhibit O'Keeffe's work in 1916. The only problem was he didn't tell her he was doing it. When O'Keeffe met him the first time, she was mad at him and told him to take her exhibition down. He refused, and the two did eventually get to talking. And, over time, they fell in love. Sometime later, they married. By the mid-1920s, Georgia O'Keeffe was recognized as one of America's most important and successful artists. She was known primarily for her paintings of New York skyscrapers and for her modern American image. And of course, she was also known for her flowers. What's truly unique about O'Keeffe is that at this time, most women were only becoming teachers or nurses. O'Keeffe had the courage to strike out on an entirely new and distinctive path. Okay. It's time to see again how you're keeping up. Let's take our next quiz. Let's start here. What is abstract painting? Is it an unfinished picture of something? A 
a picture that's not realistic but conveys an impression, a photograph, or for those of you who might just be waking up, mm, what? Of course, we know it is a picture that's not realistic but uses lines, shapes, and colors to convey an impression. This might feel like trivia, but it's actually fairly important. What was the name of O'Keefe's husband? Was it Albert Schweitzer, Aloysius Schmidt, Albert Einstein, or Alfred Stiglitz? Of course, it was Alfred Stiglitz, and he played a very prominent role in O'Keefe's life and career. And finally, what was O'Keefe known for during her early career? Was it flowers and matchbooks? skyscrapers and flowers, her leadership skills and good home cooking, or her faith? Well, while we hope she was known for many of these things, uh, she was primarily known for her skyscrapers and flowers. Now let's get back to O'Keefe herself. In the summer of 1929, she made the first of many trips to northern New Mexico. The stark landscape, distinct indigenous art, and unique regional style of adobe architecture inspired a new direction in O'Keeffe's artwork. For the next two decades, she spent part of most years living and working in New Mexico. O'Keeffe made the state her permanent home in 1949, three years after her husband died. O'Keeffe's New Mexico paintings coincided with a growing public interest in regional scenes. Her simple, beautiful way of noticing the things around her answered that call. It is kind of like she helped God show us things we didn't know we needed to see. Everyone loved Georgia O'Keeffe's work, and she was growing very, very famous. Let's watch a short video that shows O'Keefe herself working in New Mexico, where she discusses how she started noticing and using bones for her paintings. The first year I was out here because there were no flowers, I began picking up bones. Well, I wanted to take something home. <laughs> I wanted to take something home to work on. I had a whole pile in the patio there. I wasn't painting them right then, but I had to get them first. And when it was time to go home, I felt I hadn't started on the country. And I wondered what I could take home that I could continue what I felt about the country. And I couldn't think of anything to take home but a barrel of bones. So when I got home with my barrel of bones to Lake George, I stayed up there quite a while that fall and painted. That's where I began, that's where I painted my first skulls, from this barrel of bone. And first I painted the horse's head. And then I got this cow's head. And I had the cow's head painted against the blue. And I thought, well, I have to do something else about that. And that was at the time that the men were all talking about the great American novel, the great American play, the great American, oh, it was the great American everything. And I thought they didn't know anything about America. A lot of them had never been across the Hudson. So I thought, I'll make my picture a red, white, and blue. <laughs> I'll make it an American painting for these people that don't go across the Hudson. And this was my painting. I put a red stripe down each side. It entertained me, but I don't think anybody else caught on to it for quite a while. 
Another thing I collected was artificial flowers that they had in all the little country stores. Poor artificial flowers, but sometimes they were very pretty. The bones do not symbolize death to me. They are shapes that I enjoy. It never occurs to me that they have anything to do with death. They are very lively. Uh, no, uh, George O'Keefe uh, denies that, uh, that it has anything to do with death. She does not associate it with death. For instance, that pelvis series of the bones she found on the desert. She holds them up and then sees the mountain through the hole in the bone so that she goes through this into nature. You can take it as a symbol of a sort of concrete immortality in these things, too, that they outlast, every, they outlast death itself. They please me. And I have enjoyed them very much in relation to the sky. And after a while, I thought it's very easy to always be having a bone with a blue hole in it. I'd better make it another color. So I had a reddish bone with a yellow sky. That wasn't too bad either. Where do you suppose you got the idea of, of being an artist? I haven't the faintest idea. I often think about it and wonder, but I had it in my head when I was, well, I couldn't have been 12 before the when I had that idea. You had what idea? That I wanted to be a painter. I was going to be a painter. During the 1950s, O'Keefe began to travel internationally. She created paintings that evoked a sense of the spectacular places she visited, including the mountain peaks of Peru and Japan's Mount Fuji. At the age of 73, she embarked on a new series focused on the clouds in the sky and the rivers below. But soon, O'Keefe's eyes began to fail. She painted her last unassisted oil painting in 1972. However, O'Keefe's will to create did not diminish with her eyesight. In 1977, at age 90, she observed, I can see what I want to paint. The thing that makes you want to create is still there. Late in life and almost blind, she enlisted the help of several assistants to enable her to again create art. In these works, she returned to favorite visual motifs from her memory and vivid imagination. Georgia O'Keeffe died in Santa Fe, New Mexico on March 6, 1986, at the age of 98. It's time for our last series of questions. Are you ready? Where did Georgia O'Keeffe relocate later in her life? Was it New Orleans, New Jersey, New Hampshire, or New Mexico? Well, I think we can all agree it was New Mexico. Here's another simple one. What did O'Keefe do after she lost her sight? Did she give up and take a nap? Did she hire apprentices to paint with her? Did she go on a trip or write a book? Of course, she hired apprentices because we all need a little help from time to time. Now it's time for you to show even more of what you know. You are going to have a chance to make some of your own creations to show the things that you've observed and give impressions to other people. Please direct your attention to the front of the classroom where you will be instructed on what comes next. 